Hey everyone, I'm Vivi and I'm back at it again with another Sims 2 lot renovation in Strange Town. Today's theme is military bases and doomsday bunkers and I'm going to be real with you guys, this house was the worst, okay? There are a lot of questionable Maxis slots in this game, lots of weird choices were made all over the place, but this was just such a depressing place. I'm talking of course about none other than the Grunt family home because this is what we're working on today and boy did they need my help. Tank has always lived under the hard thumb of his father, General Buzz Grunt. In this domesticated boot camp, can Tank prove his worth to his demanding dad? Long story short, this is a house full of men that desperately need some redecorating, so let's go. Here we are, immediately the game has me looking at Tiny Buck, who is in the kitchen of course, I think that's his favorite place in the house, but I also love food, so who am I to judge? We've got Rip and Tank, these names, oh my god. The two brothers are standing outside, and I know for a fact the second I unpause the game, they will be at each other's throats fighting nonstop. they're really trying to rival the pleasant girls over who has the most toxic sibling relationship. And of course, we've got the head of the family himself, the man, the myth, the legend, General Buzz Grunt, with his fabulous Giga Chat chin and his military uniform. This man is a grouchy menace who militantly controls his kids, hates hippies and aliens, so you know he's like one of the most enjoyable people to be around in Strange Town. Oh my god, no wonder his wife left him to go and get electrocuted in Olive Spectre's garden or something. I mean, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, he's, he's just a treat. But anyways, enough of that questionable storyline, we've got a lot of work to do on this lot makeover. I have not seen a build so bland, so uninspired, which is kind of the point because I believe this is supposed to be a refurbished military barracks or something like that. At least that's what it looks like to me. It's got no color, no personality, no nothing. Everyone has these sad little single beds, including General Buzz, who you'd think he'd at least have a double bed somewhere, you know, because he at least did have a wife at some point in time, so didn't they have a family room? I don't know. I think one of the most odd choices made here was to place this house on such a huge lot. The lot itself is enormous, but it's mostly empty. The house is spacious, but it's not like too huge. The large watchtower in the back is fine, but then there's literally just nothing else going on here. No landscaping, no terrain paint at least, it's just empty. There's just a bunch of bushes and a small outdoor dining area at the back and that's it. So it was definitely a challenge trying to fill this space or at least making it feel less empty. So naturally, the first thing I did was to delete most of the objects they had. I did give this family quite a lot of extra funds just to decorate this space because even though they weren't like super broke, this lot is so huge that I would have never had enough money to give it a proper makeover without the extra cash I had to ka right into their bank account. So I got rid of everything and I was looking at the layout thinking to myself, they've got plenty of space for expansion. So I did pull the house just one block out back so that we can get a little bit more extra space on the inside. In particular, I thought the second floor was going to be a pain while playing because the hallway was pretty tight. And if I know one thing about The Sims 2 is that these Sims are constantly getting stuck because they just can't walk past each other in one tile spaces. Also, I didn't like it that the gym was on the second floor of the house. Like, imagine how loud it is when you're down in the kitchen or dining room and someone is lifting and dropping heavy weights upstairs. Those of you who go to the gym, like, you know how some dude bros can never resist dropping the dumbbells just to attract attention. So I'm pretty sure this is the exact kind of place where this happens all the time. So yeah, I was like, we're not having this at this house. <laughs> We're moving the gym. I was considering giving them a basement for the gym, which I think is also a really nice solution, but you'll see in a minute I did something a bit different. Plus, I think the basement would be an excellent place to put a doomsday bunker, which you just know General Buzz needs a bunker, because he's a conspiracy theorist, come on. He's the guy who thinks that an alien invasion is imminently incoming, like his neighbor is an alien, oh my goodness. Wait, the dormers. The dormers of this house. These were a pain and I still haven't figured them out perfectly. I I wanted to keep them but I also made the angle of the roof smaller which made the dormers stick out more. So I didn't like that and I made the dormer wall slightly shorter by using the constraint floor elevation cheat. However, the windows were just glitching and they are still glitchy and I'll probably change them again at some point. I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. I'm just showing you briefly that I tried various things. I tried putting ladders to make the dorms a functional space but I gave up on that idea quickly because it was just occupying too much footprint on the roof and it was looking really weird. Also, here's a glimpse of how I brainstorm my builds. Here's me placing multiple
multiple windows to see which one is perfect for this house. At the end I settled again for the bespoke windows to match the front door because they're just so perfect. You can never go wrong with this set. Then this exterior color. Okay, I basically tried to match the original house aesthetic. However, I just hated it and I ended up changing this way later into the build because, you know, I just thought the sandy color was too bland. It was just blending way too much with the desert and I didn't like it. I wanted to make the house black with bright orange, but the orange was a little bit too intense. It was kind of crazy and you guys would have probably screamed at me about it. So I kept it black. You'll see about that later. So anyhow, I placed the driveway, but the car I actually placed was a, this is not a drivable car. It's just a decorative car. I haven't downloaded a drivable military vehicle. Perhaps I should, but this is going to work okay for now. But anyways, I placed the driveway and I was messing around with the idea of using a garage door at the end of it, but I, it just, it didn't look right. And I didn't like using a tall fence. There's a hood deco barbed wire fence surrounding the lot, which makes it look like there's much more territory that belongs to the family, which is fine by me. So I didn't want to outline the lot with a different fence that was clashing with that. At the end, I went with this basic metal fence. Then I placed a section of it on a diagonal to make it look like it's actually a partially opened gate. And I think it works. I also placed an invisible fence on the opened area to prevent Sims and pets from walking in through there because I want them to use the actual path and gate towards the entrance of the house. Okay, the watchtower. I put like 20 minutes plus. I had to check my footage. I put like nearly 30 minutes of work just on this one thing. And the outcome is just so underwhelming. I'm sorry, but I wanted to maintain the look and I just made it skinnier and quote unquote rounder. I just gave it a small footprint by using spiral stairs, but they were just so buggy to place down and it took me a century to get it right. I'll spare you the misery of watching all of that. Here's the end result. And I was playtesting with General Buzz if he could use a telescope. It works. He looked through it, which immediately attracted Mortimer Gott, who ran all the way from Pleasant View just to start a feud with the general while the Grunt Boys were fighting and crying. You know, just another normal day in Strange Town. <laughs> This is when I moved on to the interior and I realized that I still don't like the second floor layout. I wanted enough space for all of the bedrooms on the second floor. That's four bedrooms for a house that's really actually not that large. And I also wanted a common study for skill building. Usually I'd say that the smallest kid can sleep in their parents' bedroom, but you know General Buzz would not share a bed with his child. That's not manly and masculine and macho. It's not what real males are like, okay? What is this gonna teach little little buck, that he can uh, get affection and empathy from his dad? Excuse me, he's a general. <laughs> so Buck gets his own room, yay! And his room actually looks like a normal kid's room. Listen, I didn't have the heart to give him a drab, empty bedroom and nothing but army green and a depressing dresser in the corner. I know this is what the house originally looked like, but I cannot do this. Let's pretend his mom decorated his place before she left the home and that's why it actually looks like a proper kid's room. I just can't do this to him. I'd feel horrible if I had to put the kid in that sort of situation. So anyways, we got three bedrooms for the boys, they share a tiny bathroom, the loft area is a family study and General Buzz gets a nice big bedroom with an ensuite bathroom and a balcony where he can sit and stare at his neighbors menacingly. It took me a while until I found the right combo of green on green for the walls that wasn't too offensive to witness. Eventually I found these duotone bricks that were just the right amount of devoid of character and bland to match the look. And then I found this other wall that was a combo of white and pale green, so I used that all over the place, the bathrooms are in green, the bedrooms and common areas are in different shades of green. I hope you like green, otherwise I'm sorry. <laughs> If it's any consolation, Buck's room is yellow and the living room and kitchen are in grey. How exciting is that? And then outside, I was thinking of placing a garage, but I ended up building this shack. This metal shack which houses the home gym. Uh, there's really nothing much to it. It just has a corrugated roof, these little windows that match the apartment life, industrial windows. The piping is, again, from apartment life expansion pack. And I put a bunch of exercise equipment inside. It's literally just a sad little box where they go to sweat every single day. Imagine how hot it gets in there. This this is a desert. Oh my goodness. It must be like 50 degrees Celsius in there. The kitchen. The kitchen is um, pretty much a similar shape as it originally was. Basically the entire kitchen is positioned on the wall that it originally was, but I did move the fridge there. I think the fridge was like um, originally on the, the wall that's adjacent to the dining room. It's a fine functional space. It's okay. They have a lot of equipment. I don't know who cooks in this house. I never really looked at their cooking skill points, but someone has to cook, right? I did make sure to place a lot of 
fruit bowls and just fruit lying around the place because I'm pretty sure that the general is like, eat your fruits and veggies because you have to be healthy and strong to defeat the aliens when the invasion comes. But yeah, he's militant about their workout regime. He's militant about the diet that they eat at home. He's not very militant about the things that Buck eats, but he's also really... He doesn't really remember that Buck exists most of the time. Anyways, uh, in the dining room, I think they initially had two separate tables, which was just you know, kind of goofy. I mean, I know this is supposed to be a military barracks of sorts, but it's still a family home after all. I used this big cafeteria table that came with the university expansion pact, if I am correct. In an ideal world, I would have put it exactly in the middle of the room, but then all of the chairs on the kitchen side of the dining room would be unusable. Technically, the game thinks that doors or archways block the chairs, so Sims can't sit there. It's just super annoying. And this is where I took a week's break from decorating this house. I wanted to play more more. I wanted to work on my hood deco video and then the CC folder for that. So I kind of put this renovation on the back burner because, you know, it's the kind of house that's not really that inspiring to begin with. And when I logged back into the family and I looked at these exterior colors, I was like, you know what? No, I'm gonna change it to black. Even if people call me basic for it, I just really prefer the higher contrast. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, because right now I am working on a whole bunch of terrain paint to make the grounds of this huge lot feel like there's more to it than just one tone of sand and that's it. I decided to remove the paved paths and use terrain paint instead. As I said earlier, this lot is pretty big and it's mostly empty, so using terrain paint allowed me to create more variation in the look of the lot without placing objects absolutely everywhere. So yes, the house gets repainted in a concrete foundation, metal paneling, on the exterior walls on the first floor, brick on the upper floors, there's some piping, again the apartment life piping, and uh, I did place some vegetation. You know, deserts, if you look at deserts, they're actually like not completely sandy. I mean, some deserts are, but a lot of them are not. There's just a lot of vegetation. It's just different kind of vegetation. And they already had these bushes and whatnot, so I decided, you know, I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna keep the bushes, even though it has me wondering, who in the world in this house is taking care of bushes and trimming them and whatnot? Does the general even care? I'm pretty sure he cares about keeping appearances and I'm sure that he cares if his house looks okay, but he's also not really friendly. There's a bunch of warning signs at the front of the house, like no llamas, no witches, no dogs, just to really sell the message that this household is very inclusive and accepting of all same kind. So yes, I started my second building session working from the outside in, did all of that outdoor work, Work, terrain painting and I was you know I was decently satisfied with it it's not perfect but can it ever be perfect I've seen other people's renovations and I'm like this is so cool and then I look at mine and I'm like mm -hmm, I'm not really sure about this one <laughs> but it's already here and you're looking at it and I can cry about my regrets later so yes I started from the outside in and then I moved back into the interior to do the bulk of the actual furnishing of the house the most difficult part of building this house was resisting the urge to decorate it too beautifully. This is a house with four men, okay? There are no women living here. And I don't know about you guys, but so many men just live in these absolutely empty rooms with no decorations, no anything, not a single plant or painting on the wall. They only use like the big light. Like, why are you like this? Men do be like throw a mattress on the floor in the garage and they're like, this is my house now. <laughs> I gotta admire it because I could never. Yeah, I, I do care a lot about the aesthetic of my space. Even though I'm not the best at decorating, I do care about it. I kind of live vicariously through creating these spaces in The Sims because, you know, decorating things beautifully and having an amazing house kind of comes with um, a high cost, especially these days. Rest in peace, uh, Gen Z and millennials. We can never actually afford a home. <laughs> Fun times, fun times to exist in. Of course, not all men, before someone screams at me in the comments, not all men live like this. Some men have amazing homes, but I just, you know, I've witnessed enough in my personal life to know that some men do be like, mm -mm. they would genuinely live in a dungeon and not care about it at all. So yes, it was kind of a challenge, like how do I furnish this entire interior without using too much decoration and plants and paintings and colors all over the place. My personal style, if I show you guys, maybe I should show you guys sometimes uh, my personal hood. I play in custom hoods. I think I talked about this in one of my earlier videos, but I play basically exclusively only 
In custom hoods, sims that I create, houses that I build, even maps that I make in SimCity 4, I literally have not played with the pre-mades ever since the game came out. As much as I appreciate the lore, this might be an unpopular opinion, but playing with the pre-mades is never as exciting as thinking of the concept of the pre-mades, if that makes sense. But yeah, I am a very um, custom girly. I like creating everything from scratch. My houses, my townies, my hoods, everything. And it's just so much fun because it's unique. Nobody has played that before. And you're really doing your own thing creatively. It's such a fun and liberating experience. But sorry for going on a little rant. This is why sometimes when I play with the pre-mates, I'm kind of like, I have these moments where I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Especially when I see like random townies from like, I would see a townie from like River Blossom Hills and I'd be like, who even is this? I've never seen you in my life. So yeah, I should definitely show you guys the things I've done in my personal hood. I'm probably never gonna play that on camera, but I would show you and tell you the stories of those sims because, oh my goodness, if you think that Don Lothario is a womanizer, you have not seen. <laughs> You have not seen the main legend of my hood, one of my founders, who managed to get like six women pregnant before he turned into an elder. Mind you, I created him as an adult. So that was like in, what, 20 sim days? He ended up having like 10 kids? Please, it's just, it was something else. And he wasn't even a romance sim. He wasn't even a romance secondary. He was just insane. But anyways, I love him. He's such a legend. He's so amazing. He's an artist. He He is the richest sim in my hood. He started from basically nothing. He never wanted to get a job. He just wanted to create art and somehow he managed to become the richest sim ever. So wow, <laughs> he was just destined for it. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. But let's get back into this build. I'm sorry for rambling. I just got really excited about this. Um, yeah, enough of that. This is Rip's room. What I've started doing for these builds lately is I place a whole bunch of objects from the catalog in their respective rooms and then later on arrange them, pick the swatches and add more decorations. Furnishing room by room from 0 to 100, it sounds good in theory, but it doesn't really work every time. Sometimes when I'm furnishing one room, I see an item and I'm like, oh, this would look so good in this other room. So I have to move and place it. I hope this is okay. I'm sure it's a little bit more chaotic to watch, but that's just how the build process is. And I'm showing you realistically what it is. I'd love to try live streaming one day so we can all do this together in real time. But at this stage, I don't really have a space that would allow me to do that. Plus, I don't think I'll be able to talk as much as I do during these videos. I actually write scripts while I'm editing my videos. I just take really long notes about the things that I want to say and then improvise a little bit of course but I'm someone who doesn't like talking in general. I love writing. I actually work as a content writer right now because this is something I want to do but talking actually really isn't my thing. This is the worst part of YouTube for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, having to talk is just oof. I'm someone who's just very quiet in real life to begin with. People are like, you never say anything. Like I could sit with someone in a room for eight hours and not say a word. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. I'm just kind of non-verbal for the most part. And even worse, having to listen to my own voice during editing. I mean, come on, <laughs> it's so painful <laughs> every time. It's okay, it's okay. It's not that bad. I've kind of grown used to it by now. I'm past the cringe. I've I've passed that threshold where the cringe is no more. I don't know what live streaming would be like, but I'd be willing to try that one day and um, yeah, have some fun in real life and maybe it's something that I would actually enjoy. <laughs> maybe it's something that would feel good, like interacting with you guys in real time. I think that would be super awesome. But anyways, you may have noticed that the boys don't have computers in their rooms. For instance, Rip has a desk, but he doesn't have a computer. That's because General Buzz is a bit old school, you know, he doesn't allow personal devices. If the kids want to be online, they have to use the family computer in the shared study. He's the only one that has a separate PC in his office and that's because he uses it for work. Nobody else has access to that room anyways, it's locked. Buck's room is probably the only place in the house that doesn't feel somewhat depressing. I decorated it with toy planes and animals. I actually haven't looked into Buck's interests, but let's imagine for a second that those are two things that he likes. The general's bedroom. He has this print right above his bed that pictures two sims holding hands surrounded by writing, and I'd like to imagine that this is a photo from his wedding with Lila. Even though he has a tough exterior, he still misses his wife in his odd and bitter way. He's sad that he doesn't have a housewife maid in his house to cook and take care of the kids. I wonder if he'll find a lady like that. Hmm. Brandy Broke is a single housewife. Oh my god. Imagine their two families combined. That would be six kids to start out with. 
wait, no, I don't even think of it. This idea kind of slaps, not gonna lie. <laughs> But we'll see, we'll see. Brandy is into older men. If you've seen the Broke Let's Play video, she's into older men. She likes the elderly for some reason, so maybe General Buzz has to look elsewhere. I used more vanilla objects in this house than I would usually do. Most of my houses are furnished almost exclusively with custom content because I'm just, you know, I've been playing The Sims for nearly 20 years. I'm kind of used to having custom content all the time everywhere. But I actually use more vanilla or Maxis Matchy stuff here, and it's fine, I think it works. Lighting fixtures are usually the last thing I place when furnishing a home. I don't think I've talked about this before. I usually switch to nighttime because the lights automatically turn on in buy mode and it gives me a feel of how the house will actually look like at night during gameplay. Someone asked me where I got these spotlights that I'm using in the study right above the chess table and I wish I could tell you that. I wish I could tell you that. But I guess I downloaded them with a lot because I couldn't find the source. They don't have a proper description as well, so I have no clue who the creator is. I always try to find links for you you guys but sometimes I just use these obscure pieces of custom content that have been in my game for like a century and I've moved them through multiple computers and downloads folders so I can't find the original source. Either way if you see any object that you like you can leave me a comment with a timestamp and I'll try to find it for you. After I was done with the lights I did a round through all of the rooms for some finishing touches. So let's see what did I do. I added a console table next to the staircase on the first floor. I added a washer and dryer combo in the downstairs bathroom. I also did a bit of outdoor work, again, you'll see that in a little bit. I placed a couple of military looking posters in the corridor leading up to the general's office. I placed an extra counter in the kitchen. I think that space was originally occupied by the fridge, so it ended up looking quite empty when I moved it. Oh, I do this thing where because I usually play looking at the house from one angle, I prefer whichever it is, it is different for each house, but I do this thing where because mostly I look at it from this one angle, I end up decorating the rooms in so much detail on the side that I'm looking at and then the rest of it stays empty. <laughs> and that's just nonsensical because that's not how people furnish their homes in real life, you know? So that's a habit I need to let go of. You know, I need to improve. I definitely have a lot more to learn. That's why you'll often see me spinning the camera to look at a thing from multiple angles. I've actually picked this habit up from making art. When you're creating traditional art, you're encouraged to take your canvas and put it upright a few steps away from you. Step back and you can notice perspective issues that you would usually miss out on while staring at it super closely in detail. So that's essentially what I do every time I place an object or decorate some part of the house and then I zoom out a little bit and spin a little bit left and right up and down to see, okay, is this looking good in this space. But yes, this is essentially the last piece of detailing that I'm doing right now and that's the end of the speed build. So here it is, here is the finished Grunt family home. There are three things that General Buzz hates. Well, technically, there are a lot more than three things, but these are on top of his chart. Number three, he hates how lazy his sons are. That's why he's putting them through rigorous training three times a day. Mornings are spent at the outdoor military course, at noon they're hiding away from the sun in their poorly ventilated garage gym, and in the evenings they play sports. The second thing he hates are those gosh darn hippies, the Curious Brothers, living up on the hill. Those green skin lovers make the general sick because the number one thing he hates most are aliens. And because bad luck seems to be following him everywhere, one of the worst of these outsiders has moved in right next door. That's why it's so important for the general to train his two sons to be real human men. I'm sorry, did I just say two sons? 
Yeah, Buck Grunt also exists, but his father doesn't remember that too often. Buck doesn't mind though, as long as he can spend his day eating snacks and hiding away in his room, it'll all be fine. He doesn't want to end up doing daily workouts like his older brothers anyways. Even though Rip is considered as a failure of the family, Tank gets the worst of his dad's temper. There are high expectations that he'll be following along in his daddy's footsteps, so the general is lecturing him from dusk till dawn. Will Tank be able to fulfill his dad's wishes? Will Rip finally get out of this house as soon as possible? What will happen to forgotten little Buck? And can the general open up his stone-cold heart to love once more? We'll have to wait and see because this is all I have for you today. I hope you liked this renovation. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I love reading your feedback. Subscribe if you want to see more Sims 2 content like this and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!